Hey guys, so last Friday was World Goth Day and that gave me an idea to do another painting video for the Haunted Garden Art Challenge by Grace Moth um, along with the goth tag because that's a really fun kind of getting to know you kind of tag especially for people who are into the subculture. Um, so here we go. So question one, how long have you been goth? I always think this is a funny question because like a lot of other people have said before, I think it's just something that your personality is inclined to. Like if you like dark things, you just like it. I don't think anybody just wakes up and is like, oh, I feel a real goth today. <laughs> um, so for me, I think I've always been drawn to that kind of stuff. I always loved Halloween. I always loved dark themes. Um, a lot of my old favorite movies from when I was a kid featured dark stuff. It's just really interesting and fun and um, I've always kind of gravitated towards that kind of stuff. For example, I always have loved Beetlejuice, one of my all-time favorites. Um, I also really liked The Great Mouse Detective. Uh, anything Tim Burton that came along was always fantastic. I scissor Scissorhands and stuff like that. It's just definitely a prevailing theme that was always around. And watching old cartoons and stuff, especially in the 90s and like early 2000s, there was usually a token goth character and that was usually my favorite. Especially if they had a great like sarcastic sense of humor. Question number two, how are you introduced to goth? Uh, that's another kind of similar to the first one. Uh, growing up in the 90s, I feel like a lot of the kind of witchy gothy vibes were having a moment, partially due to grunge becoming more popular, but uh, watching movies like The Crow, The Craft, like it was definitely a thing. Part of it too was um, a huge influence of music with me. So I grew up in a family where music was huge for everybody in my family. Uh, my parents went to concerts all the time. They both have really fun taste in music, which is very lucky for me growing up in Georgia because so many of my friends, like their family just listened to like the Beatles and country music. And my parents had uh, way more diverse taste than that. Um, they listened to a lot of like um, alternative 80s stuff, uh, punk, metal, um, all those kind of things. So I had an early kind of impression on that, especially because uh, my dad rides motorcycles. So I remember being little, going to bike shops and hearing like that kind of music and stuff. So I wasn't sheltered from the alternative scene whatsoever. And uh, I'm really grateful for that because I think it would have taken me a lot longer to find the scene, to find music if it wasn't for having um, not only my parents, but also my older brother who was into a lot of music like that too. Um, I remember uh, sneaking into his room and stealing his CDs to make copies of and stuff and he had around, this would have been like late 90s, early 2000s stuff, but a copy of Mindless Self Indulgence's Frankenstein Girl Seemed Strangely Sexy and Orgy's Candy Ass, which was great because like that introduced me to the crazy industrial kind of thing. I got really into that and listened, listened, listened to that a lot in middle school. And um, from there, that kind of took me down the rabbit hole of like those genres. And even though a lot of people look back on the early 2000s stuff and it's like, oh, it's so cringy or whatever, that stuff's still super nostalgic for me. And I still love a lot of kind of the crossover industrial stuff and still listen to a lot of industrial today too. Um, definitely one of my preferences as far as like gothic subgenres. And that is actually a perfect segue into the next question, which is what gothic subgenre would you put yourself into? Um, I personally hate locking into any particular label because I don't feel super strongly about any of them in particular. I like different aspects from all of them. I think there's really cool things to pull from for trad goth, um, death rock, post-punk. Uh, even like the Victorian elements I think are really beautiful, same way with like the vampire goth stuff has some really pretty elements even though um, I won't go through the trouble of wearing like all the different crazy layers and stuff like that but I love seeing other people do it and I love the artistry that goes into that and that kind of like hyper romanticized, dramatized style. Um, oddly enough, if I had to like label myself under any particular subgenre, I think I would go with more of like the industrial goth kind of thing. 
um, or the elements from Trigoth since it's more like punk derived. I definitely listen to a lot of uh, punk and metal type stuff, but I love like the goth twist. So for example, when I was getting more into music, when I was uh, in my formative years, it, it was, there's was a lot of like new metal-y type stuff. And then I found Alkaline Trio when I was in seventh grade. And at that time that would have been like 2001 or so. Um, and uh, that was huge changing for me because it was right around the time uh, Good Morning had come out, and that particular album was very dark, very dramatic, a lot of kind of vampire themes, kind of satan stuff, a little bit of that kind of darkness, and I, I just loved the darkness and the drama, and that really kind of sent me more down into gothier vibes and looking for more gothy music, even though you might not think of Alkaline Trio as a goth band, but they definitely have goth punk vibes in a lot of their music. And if you haven't checked that out, if you just listen to normal kind of goth music stuff and you're feeling a little peppy, definitely check out Good Morning. Not all of their albums have that kind of feeling, but that particular one definitely does. You definitely can't ignore around that time period too that like the whole mall goth movement that started up really hard in the 90s was in full force. So there was a whole influence of like, okay, we're at the mall, we're going to Hot Topic and the other goth kids at school, which there weren't a ton of, they were kind of sprinkled in a little bit. Um, you know, everybody had their trip pants, everybody had their Happy Bunny stickers and all those kind of old throwbacks. Um, so it was around enough where it was present. Uh, and I'm glad it was because back then, like it wasn't as strong on the internet as far as finding like, now you can just roll onto Facebook and there's like groups all over the place that you can just join in and learn more about the scene. But back then, it's like you just had to find people um, or maybe get lucky and find like a music magazine. But but luckily, there was a little baby goth scene that was at my schools. So that kind of helped introduce me to what other people were doing with it, too. Aside from me exploring the music I could find. And the music I could find was either thanks to the alternative magazines. So things like Spin or Alternative Press. Or really what really got me deeper into that stuff was uh, Much Music or Fuse, whichever it was at the time because it changed at one point. Um, Mistress Julia, Headbangers Ball, all those kind of like shows where we had a really great representation for the genres, um, maybe more metal leaning. I mean, finding, finding mainstream goth music was like actual goth music is extremely hard. So even just having any sort of like alternative uh, fashion and style and music representation was exciting. And now, like, I, I haven't watched MTV in years, but it's one of those things where it's like, I, I highly doubt it's even as well represented as it was back then. What do you believe to be the basis of the Gothic subculture? So the big cornerstones most people think of generally, I think, are fashion and music. And that's definitely the easy shorthand answer as far as like what moves goth culture and how it shifts and change as we currently see it. Um, but if you want to really dig back, um, I think we could look at things even further back, like Edgar Allan Poe, of course. It's like goth has been around as long as there have been people because there will always be um, a mindset that takes you towards thinking of things that are more macabre. Um, so, and even the term gothic literally has been in English language for hundreds of years, the, the gothic people in Europe and things like that. Um, but as we think of it in modern culture, that definitely became more shaped and solidified with the old school trad goth scene. So, um, you know, even if they don't identify that way, you have like Bauhaus and Susie Sue and all these like godfathers, godmothers of the scene um, that really gave a more concentrated style to it that everyone was able to emulate after it got popularized. So you could say that that was for sure like the basis of modern goth culture, but as far as like goth becoming a thing in existence, I'm sure it's always been around just like how other alternative ways of thinking have always been around. Like that's just part of people. What do you dislike about being goth? 
Um, so I'm actually pretty casual with it. Most of the time, my look isn't very extreme. I get more extreme for shows, uh, which garnishes a lot more attention. So like going to concerts, I might put on like big boots and fishnets and torn up shirts and do the hair and makeup and everything. But day to day, I'm much more casual. So it's like, okay, I'm wearing all black or mostly black or whatever, but it's not really enough that people care. So I don't have to deal with much prejudice or anything like that. And I mean, maybe it was more of a thing in middle school and high school because those were the days of uh, kind of alongside the mall goth thing. You also had the American Eagle. Everybody had to dress a certain way and like, this was cool. And like, oh, if you're not this, then you're not like, that's not okay. So there's there was more of that vibe back then, but I was already used to that by then because it's like I was wearing the concert like the like band tees and stuff and nobody knew who the the musicians were and things like that and I was already kind of an outlier in terms of taste. Um, not that there weren't other people who didn't like, you know, like the Ramones or whatever, but it it was just one of those things where it didn't matter to me, so I didn't pay it much mind. Um, although I do think it's funny when I get geared up for concerts and stuff like uh my friend amanda and i would do that for shows and then like go get dinner beforehand and you know we're both like around 30 and people are looking at us sideways and gawking and things like that but the great part about doing things that, like like that at this age is i don't care like i don't care i have my life i have my habits i'm already you know heavily tattooed and stuff like that so it's like i'm used to people kind of noticing those things and you just you just don't have to care and it's very liberating so um that aspect of it as far as dealing with like the rest of society is totally fine i think most of the problems with being goth come from within the community because you have people who over define what being goth is you have people who um are, are i don't know the gatekeepers the elitists they kind of make it unpleasant because there's so many ways to kind of enjoy the culture of, of like goth culture that I don't think it's worth um, hammering people about. Let people enjoy it the way they want to. It doesn't matter if they have their hair teased to high heaven. It doesn't matter if they um, how they feel about anything in particular, whether or not they listen to Sisters of Mercy or anything like that. I think it, I think it comes way more down to like the spirit of goth. So but once again, once you have like a certain uh, confidence in who you are and like what you enjoy, none of that really matters. So as long as you don't let that get under your skin and don't um, fall prey to people's criticisms or nitpicking, then it's all good. What do your parents think of it? Um, well, kind of like I was talking about a little bit before, my parents were kind of on the alternative side of things themselves. Uh, so my parents never gave me a hard time about it. Um, yeah, it's really funny, like nine times out of 10 growing up, my dad was wearing a black shirt with some skulls and flames and motorcycle stuff on it. Uh, my brother was is uh, around four or five years older than me and he was already into a lot of that stuff. Like the first uh, concert they took my brother to was Metallica. So it was one of those things like my parents were not going to be phased by anything I did. Like as long as I was being sensible, the thing, the thing my parents used to say to me is like, we don't care how you dress as long as it's weather appropriate. <laughs> so I had it super easy. My parents weren't controlling. They let me like school was controlling. We had limitations on what we could do as far as like hair and makeup and clothes go. But um, during the summer and stuff, they'd totally be cool with me dyeing my hair pink or whatever I wanted, um, which was great. Like I never felt censored. I never felt limited. Um, I think I, the only time I remember my mom complaining about what I was listening to was one time I was listening to Isley just because the singer has like a very like fairy like songbird voice, which can be kind of annoying if you're not into it. She didn't like that and she didn't like... Um, I was listening to the best of the dead milkmen on loop and a lot of the songs towards the end of that best of get kind of downer -y. so they um so yeah i can understand how you don't want to hear uh 
them com them being like super kind of nihilistic <laughs> in skating. But the, the first half of the album's real peppy and fun, so you know, teach their own. But um, but that was still just you know random like punk stuff. So or for the Dead Milkmen. Um, but as far as like goth stuff, I don't think I really. I, I remember one time, even though they don't consider themselves goth, like I played the Dresden Dolls for my parents in the car one time, and they didn't complain about it. Um, but they, why would they be faced by that? Like my parents knew who Susie Sue was. My parents uh, knew The Cure. Like like they they were. Um, you know, fresh out of high school and all that stuff, or about to graduate high school when that stuff came out. So it's like they were around that scene and they, they had heard that music and they may not have listened to it super actively, but it was already on their radar. Um, Dad generally listens to more metal. He's more into like Slayer, Iron Maiden, Metallica, things like that. Um, Mom was more into, um, like, Blondie and Pretenders and things like that. So I had a pretty well-rounded influence from them. Um, lots of great, like, female singers that my mom listened to. Uh, and, and so, yeah, like, nothing I was going to listen to was going to, uh, shock my parents. <laughs> and, and growing up with Alice Cooper, uh being on rotation with my parents like when Marilyn Manson and stuff like that came on the scene like it was like yeah we've seen this before what's the big deal <laughs> so so family stuff has never been an issue um they've always been supportive of like me and my art and all that stuff even as weird as it is I do remember uh about the time I was in like high school or so my mom was giving me a hard time about wearing like graphic tees all the time so like band shirts or just like the random t-shirts and stuff she was like when are you gonna grow up and start wearing uh grown-up clothes instead of those t-shirts and I'm like never <laughs> I love t-shirts I, I design a lot of them it's just been something I've always been into collecting like graphic tees and fun designs and I love band tees because they're it's like walking around with a band poster and being into that kind of artwork, it's like, of course, I'm like super passionate about it. Uh, but that was just her being picky about stuff. She always tried to put me in dresses and stuff when I was little and couldn't stand that either. So typical mother-daughter stuff. I have caught flack from other parts of my family, though. I have some more like conservative family, like parents, cousins and things like that. Um, I actually had one of my dad's cousins get upset and unfriend me because my friend and I had gone to a concert and it was uh, Christian Death and Combi Christ were playing. So I posted photos from the concert and tagged or like wrote the names of the band on there. And I guess because it was like Christian Death and Combi Christ, he got really upset and just like was like, well, this is goodbye. And like unfriended me on the spot. But I mean, they're band names. It's fine. Um, if you really just want to throw away like a family connection over that, cool. It, it's just one of those things that I think is funny. It's like if you can't uh, mentally comprehend that there are other people out there who think differently than you do and maintain that connection, you know, that was a whole weird situation. But it's not like it was like a super close family member, so that was okay. So the next question is eyebrow or no eyebrows? Um, I definitely have kept my eyebrows. Once again, as a child of the early 2000s, there was definitely that period where everybody was like over plucking the crap out of their eyebrows, uh, which I also did. I'm very lucky that I have like semi thick eyebrows, so they came back okay. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, they were super thin, definitely too thin for like my face structure and stuff like that. Um, at which point, I should have just gotten rid of them and just drawn them back on, but. Uh, honestly, I'm like too lazy for that. I just like fill mine in. I like the way my eyebrows look in my face and just doing like the other kind of makeup with it instead. Um, in fact, like probably one of my favorite kind of like current goth style looks is this kind of grunge nouveau thing that's happening where it's like a high fashion grunge with all like the red and orange shadows like mixed in with the black. Um, and I think that look, look for, at least for my preference, for me to wear, I think looks really good with um, eyebrows. But I love seeing when people can do like really cool stylized brows, especially with like some really funky eyeliner. Like love seeing it on other people. I just know it's just like, I'm not gonna do that every day. And I wouldn't want mine to be blank. So 
it's probably just best that I keep mine on. Okay, so what is your favorite band? That is an impossible question to answer. Like, I, I am definitely not hardcore enough uh, of a fangirl about any particular band to just zero in and be like, oh my god, these guys. Um, but I love music, very passionate about music, listen to stuff all the time. Um, I don't know if I could just narrow it down to any one particular thing, one particular artist. Um, so, and I guess what I'll do is just address like my favorite goth bands because I also have a pretty diverse taste. Like if I wake up one morning and I want to listen to like one of the music channels on YouTube where it's like autumn jazz or something like that, I'll listen to that. Uh, or I'll throw some of my stuff on. If I'm feeling real high energy, maybe I want to listen to some Lizzo that morning. It doesn't really matter. But, um, but as far as like goth music goes, I definitely have some particular loves like anything by Clan of Zymox. Um, it's, I love it because they're like a moodier version of the Cure kind of thing. So it's like, I've always enjoyed that kind of vibe that they have. Um, I love a lot of the classic stuff. So like Suzy Sue and, uh, Bauhaus, Joy Division, of course, is fantastic. And it's like those kind of like moodier quintessential bands, um, have always been a, a great rotation to have, um, so aside from that, maybe some of the other kind of like goth influenced bands will say like maybe not pure goth by definition, but goth adjacent, like I mentioned earlier, Good Morning by Alkaline Trio was huge for me. Um, in terms of like goth rock, I love uh, Typo Negative. It's that perfect balance of like gloomy, but with a dash of humor. And they do a cool job of like taking a 60s and 70s rock sound and like washing it with that goth influence um and there's so many metal bands that kind of have a pull from that too it's like i wouldn't think of them as quote unquote goth but for sure have that vibe like uh, something like cradle of filth or um maybe like devil driver they kind of have like goth influence even though i wouldn't like label them as that uh, stuff like that's always great. And then there's more of your like late 70s, early 80s, like punk scene stuff, which kind of had a flavor to it. So um, The Damned is one of my favorite old school punk bands. Uh, and they definitely like dabble into some of that vibe and will bring some of that sound back into their music. Um, I really enjoy their stuff. And The Cramps, they're funny and they have like that kind of like crossover edge to them. Um, those are two good examples. Uh, as far as like more recent stuff I've gotten into, um, I really like the Bellwether Syndicate. They don't have a whole lot of stuff out, but they're just, oh man, their EP is so solid. I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, and they're really fun to follow on Instagram too. They were great live. I'd love to see them again. I, I luckily got to see them play with Clan of um, And I'm really, really grateful for that because they were a great discovery. Um, and then another recent one I would advise checking out. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated because, once again, maybe not strictly goth. It's kind of more like a hardcore industrial crossover kind of band. So if you like Skinny Puppy or Nine Inch Nails, Youth Code, um, Female Fronted, uh, it's, it's a couple and they just, I freaking love them. I, I got to see them a couple years back. Um, actually, gosh, it's been like four years now, but I love the intensity of their stuff. I like the subject matter of their songs, uh, and they just have a really intense, like textured sound. So, so for the industrial goths out there, check them out. Um, speaking of industrial, there's always that kind of stuff. Um, a little bit of Grindel here and there. I, I love Nine Inch Nails, um, even though they, they kind of cross over back and forth too. Nine Inch Nails has always been one of my favorites. Um, let's see, Zombie Girl, super fun. I want her to put out more stuff. Um, I like Combi Christ and I've seen them like, gosh, three, three or four times in concert now, but I get that they're kind of problematic and like, kind of get a little weird vibe off of, uh, the lyrics and aggressiveness, but, but that happens in music, of course.
next question is, what's your opinion on Marilyn Manson? So kind of, I think briefly mentioned it earlier, it's, it's interesting when he came on the scene. So, you know, it was the 90s, we had the grunge stuff happening, industrial stuff was picking up. And if you go back and listen to like his older stuff, it's, it's pretty much rock music. It has a unique sound. Um, it, it's one of those things where I always think it's interesting when he gets lumped in with goth. Is he goth? Because I feel like that's really what this question is getting at, right? Like, my opinion on Marilyn Manson is that he's fine. Yeah, he's super extreme. Yeah, he gets into trouble. But that's kind of the whole point. He is meant... I mean, come on. When you release something called, like, Antichrist Superstar, <laughs> uh, you're definitely going for a particular vibe there. Um, but that's kind of what... That's kind of in line with everything else I like. Like, something that challenges the status quo. Something that might be a little unsavory for some people. Um, you know, once again, I grew up with my parents listening to stuff like the Sex Pistols and like, you know, with their music, they did the same thing. They went there. They had songs talking about abortions and all sorts of crazy stuff. So when it comes back to Marilyn Manson, um, my opinion on them is that I am glad he became part of the scene. He was a boundary pusher. Um, do I think he's like goth? I wouldn't think so. Um, I don't, I think you can be dark you can kind of have those elements and themes in your work but it's not the same as being like intentionally goth or being a part of that subculture i think he's a shock rocker he uh writes like really challenging extreme music um in a variety of styles especially now that he's got just so many albums out um, some of his stuff to me is undeniably good. Some of it gets really weird and that's just the whole point of it. Um, uh, I can understand why people don't like him, um, and why it might not suit them. Uh, but I kind of like his place in it. I like a lot of the music. I listen to it. It's in my rotation. Um, Tourniquet is forever going to be one of my favorite songs. And, uh... There's, there's always going to be problems and things when you're dealing with, like, extreme musician types. So, like, all the drama that came out about Twiggy and all that stuff. But I, I can separate art from artists sometimes. Uh, sometimes not. Like, there's definitely been bands that have been ruined by uh, controversies and things that came out. But, but his whole point is he's trying to ruffle feathers. He's trying to do something that uh, challenges people. It's like, okay, so this upsets you. Why does this upset you? Like, when he came out with a video where... He had the more like feminine silhouette and stuff like that and kind of had like this kind of alien vibe like that just shook people to their core and it's like why though why did that mess people up why did it like get under their skin so bad where people were protesting and banning like their kids from wearing their shirts and like the whole nine yards um and once again because of my upbringing like that was less of a big deal in my household um and i even remember my mom telling me about like our school system had uh, PTA meetings called where they were trying to bland, uh, ban black shirts, like allowing the kids to wear shirts like that to school. And um, it didn't go through, thankfully, because that was like half my wardrobe. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it got it got pretty crazy there for a minute, uh, especially around the time of like Columbine and stuff like that. And it's um. It, it's a weird situation. Um, I think we need musicians like that. And we're kind of at a weird phase now where I feel like we're running low on that, actually. I think we, we've we seen so much of it, and especially because we've, we've been there, done that. Like, the, the rock that was out when he became uh, popular and hit the mainstream. You had Marilyn Manson, you had Korn, and then, like, all these other new metal bands and stuff that had a really extreme appearance, like Cold Chamber and stuff like that. And um, once those things had hit the mainstream and were really changing music and the culture around it, well, okay, so now we've seen it, it's not shocking anymore. Um, kind of like when all the Miley Cyrus stuff happened a couple years back. Uh, we've seen it, so it's no longer shocking. Someone's going to have to do something different. And that pendulum's going to swing back and forth where, like, things get super duper over the top extreme. So you have like Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson type stuff, and then it'll simmer down and you might have a couple years where like the more popular type is like indie rock kind of stuff for a bit. And then it'll pick back up. And then we had the scene days when I was in high school in like 2005. <laughs> 
where everyone was pushing back into that more like 80s glam rock influence but darker that was a whole thing I uh, I definitely had my scene days I, I did my little chunks of like red and stuff in my hair but I never went like full-blown scene but it was undeniably also an influence that was like present during high school um, very short-lived as far as like that whole scene it, it came and went really quickly um, but yeah it's like all that stuff is a, is a big part of the cycle all that stuff is a big part of the wheel uh, so when goth people get like, oh, no, no, Marilyn Manson, I think it ends up being more of like a rebellion thing because so many people are like, oh, you're like goth or whatever. So you like Marilyn Manson and worship Satan. And it's like, I get that because um, when I was in middle school and high school and stuff and I dressed like alternatively, people would always make the weirdest assumptions. Like they would be talking to me about music and stuff and they're like, oh, you, you probably like Avril Lavigne, right? Yeah? Yeah? You like that alternative stuff? You like Avril? And I'm like, no! <laughs> I, I couldn't stand her music. I thought it was pop trash. And I thought it was weird that she was emulating the whole, like, skate punk scene, that whole thing. Because I was listening to, like, actual skate punk, and it just felt so weird in comparison. The whole thing drove me nuts. And then same thing, Evanescence came out, and everyone was like, oh, oh yeah, I bet you love Amy Lee. And it was like... Evanescence is not my thing. That is that is not my artist. I've never really been an Evanescence fan, but if you're an alternative girl, everybody assumes that you just worship Amy Lee. And um, that was not my case. Not at all. Um, a lot of awesome female musicians I like, but she was not on the list. Um, not to say that she isn't talented. I know she can sing, but it's one of those things where it's just like... I really resented that people assumed that I liked that just because of the way I dressed or like the vibe I put out, but that's all those people knew about the alternative music scene. They're like, oh, alternative girl, you like these alternative girls. Oh, you're a goth kid, you must go to a Hot Topic and like Marilyn Manson. I mean, they're not wrong. I definitely dropped some money at Hot Topic and I definitely listened to Marilyn Manson, but I think people resent the assumption and get defensive about it. And that's why it's such a weird contested thing. Um, but I think anyone who has a deeper familiarity with a subculture can understand the difference. Um, and you just have to not let it bother you. People are people, and you know what? At least they're asking you about it and asking, they're curious about the music and the scene and they're engaging in that conversation versus the people who are just like freaked out by it and gawk at you across the grocery store. So finally, the last question here, what were your baby bat days like? Um, pretty mellow. So like I said, um, middle school and high school, there were definitely other goth kids around, but the other goth kids that were in my middle school and high school were more of those like perky hyper goths. Like a lot of them are anime kids, which was cool. I liked anime and manga too. That's a big part of how I got into drawing, but I feel like they were like manic energy lots of video games everybody was obsessed with like um kingdom hearts and stuff like that and everyone was like invader zim high energy and i didn't relate to that as much so like i had a couple of friends in the goth clique but i didn't like hang out with them super tight so i was kind of kind of like a loner goth to the side of the goth clique um it, it was just a different energy so I, I liked that you know yeah cool they've got their nightmare before christmas shirt and their trip pants and all that stuff but um, it was just a different energy. I was one of those kids in high school who was kind of friends with lots of random people and kind of floated around social groups. So uh, the baby bat goth days were kind of like whatever. Um, people knew that was my vibe, that I kind of had an alternative vibe, and some people were, were cool with it, other people weren't. Like a lot of people in high school just didn't have anything to do with me. But I was also really shy and quiet, and I was one of those weirdo art kids who, instead of like hanging out in the cafeteria in the morning, I was hanging out in the art room working on something. <laughs> so those were those were just uh, kind of chill, quiet days for me. It wasn't it wasn't anything crazy or dramatic, and um, I was I was doing a lot of research and exploring down the scene on my own, um, or like just stumbling across things as I could. Uh, so yeah, so not bad days. I wasn't ever particularly bullied for it or anything like that. Um, one girl did tell me I was going to hell because I was wearing a, a band t-shirt one time, but that was about it. So there we have it. The goth tag, done. Wolf painting, done. 
This prompt was for the animal visitor for the haunted art, haunted garden art challenge. Um, I definitely encourage you to go onto Instagram and check out the hashtag and see what everybody's been producing because it has been awesome. And I hope to see you next time. Subscribe, follow me on Instagram. See you guys.